Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to rebuild an old Crossman Storm XT. Picked it up real cheap at a pawn shop. Missing the front sight on it. See right here there's no sight there. The gun shoots very consistently but underpowered. Shooting a Crossman hollow point uh, 7.9 grain. It Average is 822 feet per second, which is 11.88 foot pounds muzzle energy. Shooting the RWS Hobby 7 grain, it should shoot those pellets at 1000 feet per second. We had a maximum of 874.7 feet per second with an average of 872. That gave us 11.82 foot pounds muzzle energy. So it's about 125 feet per second slower than the factory claim. So we picked up uh, a new spring and piston seal for it and a new front sight for it and all those parts and shipping all came to $13.92 so we're going to see if we can spend a few pennies and uh, make this back into a good rifle okay we have removed the stock you just remove this screw right here and one screw on each side and your stock comes off. And the next thing we do is we're going to remove the scope. Okay, before I mount the gun in the spring compressor, I'm going to remove this E-ring here and this spring to release the safety uh, cocking mechanism. said before you always want to make sure you hold down so that e-ring cannot go flying and the same with this spring right here you want to make sure that it cannot take off on you Holding in on the back side, you're assured that the spring is not going to leave. Okay, we're now ready to put the gun into the gun vise or the spring compressor. And now that we have the gun in the spring compressor I should use a wrench on this but I'm fighting a cold and I don't want to go out and grab to get it so we'll just use the channel locks in enough to take the pressure off of this pin right here now this pin is out and we can back off the spring compressor and we can slide our trigger back and our trigger comes out
and our piston will now come out. And now to remove the old piston seal, a short blade on a pocket knife. Once you get it in between, then you can just pry it right up. The old piston seals off. Now to install the new piston seal, you gotta, gotta push that on there as best you can, and then a small thin screwdriver and stretch it over the cone. There. And our new piston seal is on the piston. Now we are going to clean out the compression tube. I've got one of the heavier duty cleaning rods here and I have put a 12 gauge shotgun bore mop on the end and I have cut a paper towel into ribbons and I just put that over the end of the bore mop, roll it up. And you can see it come, this one actually wasn't quite so bad. I'm going to put a clean one on here. Now I'm going to put some. Uh, silicone gun oil on the paper towel a couple of strips there the oil will help loosen up the embedded gunk that's in there See, we got a lot more out once we put the oil on. I do that with full rolls of paper towels so I don't end up oversaturating the bore mop. And we're going to repeat that. Okay, I come out a lot cleaner that time and we now have a light coat of silicone gun oil in the compression tube. Next, we are going to put a little bit of molly paste on the 
piston seal and parts of the piston. And you notice I'm using latex gloves because this stuff is kind of toxic. And spread it around, just want it real thin. And there's a, you can see a little bit of, you know, the areas where the piston does rub on the chamber. A little coat of molly paste there will just want super light amount, very thin. And now we're going to put the piston into the compression tube. careful on the sharp edges. Now here's the new spring and here's the old spring. You can see that old spring is compressed by over an inch. So that's where our power drop off came from. Now we're going to put a little beam and spring gel on the spring to kind of reduce the twang a little bit. this piece in You know, just get some in there as the spring compresses when it snaps back it'll spread it around a little bit more uh, that in there now we got the piston all the way in And we are now ready to put the receiver back into the spring compressor and finish up. And now before we push the piston too far in, we want to get our cocking linkage in place. Okay, now we are going to place our trigger in. So upside down, hold. Make sure this piece is all the way up. Okay, now it's in place. And okay, now we press in until we have it, this hole lined up.
Now we put in our trigger locking bolt. I would recommend using an adjustable wrench. I just don't feel like going out to the garage. Okay, now we are ready to put our spring and our uh, E-ring holding the safety linkage and then we can put her back into the stock. Okay, we've got the gun back together. Now we're going to put the new front sight back on. Seems to be sturdy. Okay, I think we're now ready for the crony test. I've actually shot the rifle about 75 times. I gave it about 12 shots. Cronied it. Gave the chamber a uh, chamber loop treatment. Uh, 13 shots to clear that out. Cronied it. Gave it a slightly heavier chamber loop treatment. 15 shots to blow that out and cronied it with several different pellets and it uh, is getting real consistent now so we'll see what we have these will be the rws hobby seven grain We had a low of 921.3, high of 935.9, an average of 926.9, stream spread of 14.6, standard deviation 5.74. That's actually almost doubled the extreme spread I had with uh, my last crony session. But that equates to mid-13 uh, foot-pounds of muzzle energy. And with the the best pellet, you know, I tried was the JSB Match Diablo. Uh, that was very consistent and gave us like 13.64 foot-pounds muzzle energy. But everything is coming in right around 13 and a half foot-pounds. So we've gained uh, 1.8 foot-pounds muzzle energy, and it's still a very consistent shooting rifle. And uh, with just a little bit more knockdown power and it should last for quite a while so for the eleven dollars and seventy two cents it costs for the spring and the piston seal and the shipping it was well worth it and it was only two dollars and twenty cents to put a new front sight on it so very inexpensive to work on and so that's how you rebuild a uh, crossman storm xt or any other rifle in this category from Crossman. Thank you for watching.